Hi, I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. In uh, this video, I'm going to continue the ongoing discussion into um, introductory accounts and an introductory analysis of the various methods of qualitative research. Um, so far, we've done uh, a two-part discussion on narrative research. Um, I also did a two-part discussion into phenomenological research. Um, then we did a two-part discussion uh, into narrative phenomenological. Then we did participatory action research. Um, now we're going to do a two-part analysis. I'm going to do a two-part analysis into grounded theory. Um, and then we'll do case study and ethnography. So this will be the fourth installment in the sixth installment series um, into introductory accounts of um, uh, qualitative research. And today is grounded theory. Again. I'll have the notes available. All you need to do is click the link in the description um, description box. It'll take you to the PDF. Um, the download the PDF and follow along. Also, a, a banner will pop up in the video. Click the banner and you can follow along as well. So, with that being said, uh, in the notes, this is section 4.1, um, and it is on grounded theory. So, this is an introduction. Okay, so this is uh, an introduction to qualitative methods research, and the account that I'll be doing today is grounded theory. This is section 4.1. Four point one in the notes. All right. Um, this is grounded. This is grounded theory. Um, as a quick side note, I've um, I, I, I typically browse YouTube to see what's already out there um, relating to the videos, which will the, the videos that I'm doing, which will let me know how in depth I need to go into any particular topic. With respect to grounded theory, uh, I went into YouTube and I tubed um, grounded theory and uh, a very, very good series, a very comprehensive series, a far more comprehensive series than the series that I'm going to give you um, is already available. So I'm going to create a link, and I've already created the link, in the PDF to direct you towards uh, toward that uh, analysis. And it's by um, Graham R. Gibbs, um, and Grandma Gibbs has, I think, a very, very comprehensive account, especially for the web, of uh, grounded theory. So there's a link um, right underneath the beginning of um, the heading 4.1. Click that link. It'll take you to his video and his video series, and you can get more information, a better understanding of grounded theory from watching his videos as well. Um, his videos are, are going to be more detailed than my account. This is My account is simply an introductory account. If you want a fuller understanding of grounded theory, uh, click the link and um, see Grandma Gibbs Gibbs's account of uh, grounded theory. Okay, um, I want to begin with a quote so that we have an idea of you sort of situate the discourse in what grounded theory actually is. The quote is um, from uh, Strauss and Corbin, and the quote says, "Quote: The intent of grounded theory is to move beyond description." and to generate, right, to move beyond description and to generate or discover a theory, an abstract analytical schema of a process, right? What we want to do in grounded theory, and this is what sort of makes grounded theory unique in the, the six different forms and six different methods of qualitative analysis, is that in grounded theory we're attempting to, quote, generate or discover a theory. I've um, introduced this idea briefly in um, my other discussions on the other forms of um, qualitative methods research. Um, and what I, what I said before applies now. Imagine that we have um, our data, right? So this, is, this will be, oops, this will be your data. And imagine that this is our theory. You have basically two, two schools of thought. You have the school of thought where the theory is applied to the data. So that the theory is used to 
make shape and give uh, structure to the to the data that I receive. And what is an example of that? Well, in previous video series, I, you know, for example, I talked about um, phenomenological research. In phenomenological research, the interviewer, um, the researcher, participates with the participant in in a discussion, and there's a bit of Q and A. The answers that the the uh, participant gives is going to form the data that the researcher is going to analyze. Based on the data that the researcher gets, based on the, the answers and the responses that the researcher gets, or even maybe the surveys that the researcher gets, um, phenomenological theory, or, or various forms of theory, it doesn't necessarily just have to be phenomenology, the example that I gave was post-colonial theory, might be used, or some form of theory, feminist theory, Marxist theory, might be used to interpret the meaning or the significance of the data. So that there's data as, and the example that I gave is like a cookie dough, right? So that there's data here, and that there's the theory that looks something like, let's say like, like this, and that the theory is going to be um, sort of used to shape the data. So the theory is going to be applied, and what will happen, obviously, is that we're going to have the data conforming, right? So you can imagine that the theory has a, a certain structure, and we have the data, and we use the theory to shape the data, right? So the theory is used to make sense of our data. Our data is structured in accordance with the theory. Grounded theory is different, however, right? Grounded theory is completely uh, sort of different conceptual approach. Conceptually, grounded theory goes in the other direction, right? Conceptually, grounded theory says, listen, I have data, and from the data, I want to, quote, generate or discover a theory, right? I want to generate, create, or discover a theory. So rather than the theory being applied to structure the data, so this would be theory, and this would be data, right? Instead of um, a theory being used to shape or structure the data, it's, it's just the opposite, right? We have the content from... Um, the interviews that we're conducting and based on that content based on and there's a number of factors and I'll talk about that in a little bit but based on the the substance of that content our theory is going to take shape as a consequence of that substance so there's a distinction between um, conceptually the theories that we've talked about so far in qualitative analysis research and grounded theory there's a quick point of um, note, a quick note of reference that I'm going to make in um, discussing grounded theory, and that it is you can use, and it is often the case that grounded theory is used in um, in collaboration with other theories in one research project. I've had graduate students who have done this, right? So you might do participatory action research as one of your selected research uh, methodologies, in addition with a grounded theory approach, right? So there might be some uh, need to explain the data and to create a new theory because um, uh, a prevailing theory doesn't exist to interpret the data that you have. So you use grounded theory in order to generate that that theory. Um, and you can use a participatory action model, you can use uh, a narrative model, you can use a phenomenological model, and so on and so on. So it's not the case that you use grounded theory um, exclusively, that you have to use grounded theory exclusively. So if I select to use grounded theory as one of my methods of doing qualitative research, I'm excluded from using uh, another qualitative model that's false. You can use these theories, um, not these theories, but these uh, methodologies, these methods of qualitative research inquiry um, in collaboration, in conjunction with each other. They're not mutually exclusive. Um, so that's the first thing. I'll, again, I'll read the quote because I thought the quote was um, uh, very descriptive of the account. And again, this comes from uh, Strauss and Corbin. Um, quote, the intent of grounded theory is to move beyond description, move beyond description, and to generate or discover, to generate or discover a theory, an abstract analytical schema of a process. So that's the first point. Okay, the next thing that um, I want to discuss in analysis of grounded theory are the staples, right? Uh, what does it mean, right? What are the, what are the, the foundational um, criteria that give us insight into an understanding of what grounded theory is, right? So what are some of the staples of grounded theory? 